I'm Rebecca Hope from Block News and today we are being joined by Tariq Kribesh from Morocco who now lives in Chicago. Welcome Tariq. Thanks Rebecca. Tariq Thanks. is from the company Labor Crypto um, which is doing some fantastic things in the sphere of freelance work, connecting clients and customer service providers. Please tell us what you are doing. What is the problem in the market now? So Labor Crypto was an evolution idea that uh, was born from our existing business and being in a space on the ecosystem for the past few years. Mm -hmm. uh, came across some what we like to call them the five uh, drawback of a freelance economy. Uh, they, and then these are for the one that uh, uh, being in this space, the issues always have been the, the high service fee. Some platform they actually charge even customer to use their ecosystem. There's always the latency in getting the actual worker getting paid and that could take anywhere from three business days up to two weeks if this is an international transaction. Uh, and which brings me to the biggest problem what a lot of these platforms don't even have any solution to bring in the end bank individuals to the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. uh, lastly is uh, the fourth one, what I like to say is the user experience. Uh, for some of the people that actually use these platforms, they find it so much the same difficulty each time you go back. I mean, mm -hmm. you get anywhere from what, 20 to 30 different bits to 90 bits sometimes for your job. Mm -hmm. And then you have to sort through each and individual one of them to finally find the best in, best right. person to, to, to hire. So let's and, have a look at the history of the freelance freelance work. Okay, so work has obviously been changed. So the internet came along, uh, we had websites popping up. Next thing you know, we had websites that connect a service provider, for example, a web designer, graphic designer, um, speech coach, whatever, and a, and a client. So people could now connect with each other from around the world um, and the one party could get paid and the other one pays. Okay, so it's just transforming the workplace. However, we've seen some really bad models of um, these kind of free, freelance communities. Uh, we've got a couple of websites that exist now. The, the biggest one that I can think of is Upwork, which posts about a thousand jobs per day, right? It's yes. somewhere around there. And I, rem I remember when they were Elance and they partnered up with another company, became Upwork. I personally used this website. And um, there were many problems from the client's perspective and from the service provider's perspective. From the client's perspective, you put out a post and you get 90 proposals for one job. I don't have time to sift through 90 proposals. And for, obviously for the freelance, it's terrible because they, all they're doing with their time is is sending out proposals because the competition is so high. So in this globalized world, we have to find a better system, right? Right. Yeah. And so you have five areas that you're focusing on now to improve the system. What are those five areas? So the first one is the high service fee. So these platforms that you mentioned, they charge anywhere from 10 to 20 to 25 percent service fee for the freelancer. And some of them charge 5 to 10 percent for the consumers to use their network. Mm -hmm. We're trying to solve that out by using the blockchain cryptocurrency. We can easily lower that to 3%. So that's a problem that we could solve easily. Change from 20% 20, 20 to 3%. To 3%. And we, we, it depends on how the platform will perform. We can even eliminate that 3% in the future at some point. If once the advertising uh, revenues start to become uh, more increased, then we can literally make that platform seamlessly at a zero transaction fee between the clients and the freelancer. The second issue now that we use in adopting cryptocurrency and blockchain is we can allow an immediate transfer of funds to the actual freelancers rather than having to wait through banking system and, and protocols and, and regulations. And by the time sometimes the funds hits the account of the worker, it's more than 30% less mm -hmm. than what they're supposed to be getting paid. Right. And you look at the, the world populations, 39% of the individuals around the world don't have access to bank. I mean, the Philippines, the country of the Philippines, there's 100 million people that live in it, only 5% that actually have access to bank account or credit card. So this could actually allow more people to join in the ecosystem, therefore lead hopefully at some point, which is where my intentions are, is to lower the poverty level at some point if we could, by creating this income for individuals that otherwise wouldn't have. And you know, the other issue, that the fourth issue, which what you just described, the whole situations of having to go through like 90 different proposals, I can imagine how time consuming could that be. And it's not just you. Think about all these freelancers too. Like I've actually had a chance to to see the actual uh, user base for the from, from the worker mm -hmm. standpoint, and they have to sit there. And there's there's so much competition involved. And the funny thing is, is a lot of these freelancers, 
they they actually have a set of skills to do a specific thing, but they're not going to be able to do everything. But what if we can actually create some form of a collaboration between the clients and the freelancer, or between freelancers with each other, so they can refer other jobs and clients to, to, to between themselves. This way, it gives you Rebecca peace of mind. Let's say, hypothetically speaking, you hired me to to design your website, mm-hmm. and you were happy with that. Now, the first user experience was difficult because you had to go through ninety people till you find me. So now you're already a bit upset. Right, but now let's just say you're happy with my work. Mm-hmm. Now, now you need to build that website. I'm not the guy that know how to code, but I know someone that can do a great job. Yeah. You could have asked me, I could refer that person. Kind of like what lawyers and doctors they do on a regular basis anyway. So that way, now next, next time you come into the platform for the second experience, it becomes much more easier and easier with time because you're building that relationship and that repeat business with, the, mm-hmm. with people, and then people start refer others to people. And the goal eventually is to make it a one-stop shop for clients like yourself or anybody else who's watching mm-hmm. that have multiple needs to have those needs all fulfilled by one single entity. Mm-hmm. And that person that you met with should be able to help you solve all those problems. Now, now yeah, I've followed, and then the, there's a fifth thing that, uh, that you're leaving out, right? So there's the last one that no one has ever talked about. Yeah. And that's the user loyalty. There's a reason why users, they jump from one platform to another and they sign up in 700 different platforms hoping that they can get money from here and there. The reason why that's happening because platforms are not treating them with the actual, they're not compensating them for their time, tension, and data. Mm-hmm. They simply just say, hey, here's a job we got you. We're going to take our commission. Have a nice day. They don't, there's no actual personal or human support in helping them elevate themselves and grow with their skills and skill set. And that's so, what I really like about what you're saying is that... Um, there is a disconnect. There's a huge dis- disconnect from the people that are designing or, or doing the architecture of these um, these huge technologies like Upwork or websites that are allowing freelancers and clients the opportunity to connect. There's a disconnect between them and the actual users. It's not the way that it's designed at the moment is not favorable for many reasons, like you just mentioned. For the um, freelancer, it's, it takes a long time to get the money, to access money. Uh, the, the website takes a massive cut, 10 to 20%, which is a lot, uh, yeah. especially when you're spending all your time sending through proposals. Um, and then the banking access, like you said. And also there have been some strange AI developments that have, I know people that have, their, their Upwork accounts have been blocked. And so it's kind of a little bit of a disaster of an ecosystem at the moment. And what I like about you guys is that You've done not just quantitative research, but qualitative. You've, you've interviewed and spoken to over a thousand customers of these websites and really try to figure out how are people experiencing this. Um, and so it's easy to just throw around data and just say, okay, well, we're making a profit. We're happy. That's not enough. We need to ask. We need to care about the users of the platform. Um, and, of course, the, this will have great implications um, with numbers and, you know, it will be it will be huge because what you're creating is, is a loyalty program. Now, uh, so one concern was, okay, you, the, the transaction fees would have been 20%. You're not bringing it down to 3%. How do you do that with blockchain technology? How is that possible? Well, we use, issue in our own token. Uh, so we have actual that control of that uh, currency. We're not using some third-party uh, payment processing system. We're mm-hmm. using the blockchain, Ethereum, and so we're building a platform that is a dual hybrid between blockchain, Ethereum network, and a, uh, and Hyperledger mm-hmm. to store the data. On a, uh, so we, there is not that, you know, we're not using Visa or MasterCard processing system that themselves, they actually charge 2.99% right. plus 30, 30 cents on top of the transaction. So all of the debts that to pay is the actual gas fee for the transaction to take place, the effect between the client and the worker. Okay, so basically um, what you're saying is the, the current model is that because there's a lack of loyalty with um, the freelancers and the clients, and what we, we see happening is a lot of the freelancers and clients connect off the platform and prefer to pay directly oh, yeah. or whatever. Um, so what's happening is the, the current... Freelance websites are having to spend a lot of money in marketing, in bringing new users, new users the whole time. Whereas you're creating an ecosystem where you try to bring everyone together through a token so that there's one economy that everybody can contribute to. Um, as you identified, you've got, you've got three parties, right? You've got the customer, you've got the workers, and you've got the shareholders. Could you just tell us how are they all different in their um, motives and how are you bringing them together? 
So like I said, in any business, there are three constituents, the customer, worker, and a shareholder. Now the customer, they care about great user experience. Uh, perhaps they can get it free if they can. The workers, they care about doing something they love and get paid and go home. Now the shareholders, they care about is return of investment. Mm-hmm. Now, these three constituents have a different interest. Right. They all have a different interest. But if you take that same business and you tokenize it, you put a token in the middle. Now, to use the business, you need a token. Now, because you all have a token, you also capture any appreciation resulting from the action of the whole entire community. Mm-hmm. Even though you join in as a customer, you start to look a little bit more like a shareholder. And now, because you benefit from everybody does, you start to contribute yourself. So the idea of selfishness, it goes out of the window. So if you're an actual worker and you can develop something to add to this platform, this ecosystem to even make it more further appealing, you start building top of it. And now this is when the only time where any of these three constituent interests is being aligned. And that's what we feel like, that's what this, our token is, is creating, is creating that value. And the reason why we need our token so we can share that value back with our active users mm-hmm. and investors. So how does it work? Do I buy tokens? Can I? Yeah. So right now what we're doing is we're doing a pre-sale and of course followed by an ICO where people can purchase the token. Uh, we issue in two, uh, two sets of tokens, a security token that it's going to be at a 5% revenue share to any token holder no, uh, every 12 months. And then we have the utility token that's purely going to be used on the platform. Mm-hmm. And then the users that use the utility token to transact either hiding clients or, 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 or posting a job. They will be sub- entering the pool of the 50% revenue share. And our revenue comes from three sources as of now, the 3% transaction fee and the advertising revenue. And we do have intentions to bring in more, ad- more resources of advertising like educational material program or some other partnership as it comes in the future. So all the revenue in general, whatever that we get the revenue from, will be right. subject to that 50% share. So that comes back to the question of how is it possible to change your, um, your commission or your... Um, transaction free from 20% to 3%, you say, well, you're going to have a different kind of model. So on the website, there will be some advertising space. You'll have advertisers, um, which makes sense because, I mean, you're planning on having hundreds of thousands of users. Right. So um, at least use that space. And then, of course, your your 3% transaction fee, which you say is no different to what people would have paid if they paid directly to the client. Yes, correct. Okay. So if I pay you directly through PayPal or credit card, I'm still going to pay more than that. I'm still going to pay three, three, two point nine nine percent. But there is nothing. There is no rep, no share revenue back. Like there is that's that's almost like paying with cash versus paying with credit right. card. When you get a credit card, you get points, you get rewards. You can use those rewards, cash them out, gift card, whatever. But you get in something in return. When you use cash, you don't get nothing. And then what we're trying to build, and we're trying to build a business because the way we look at it is this way. They are the reason why this business exists. It's because of their work that this business is thriving. So it only makes sense that they should be taken right. share of that revenue. Right, right. Makes sense. Um, and then on top of that, you also have, as we, we see, um, a dispute resolution system, which is going to be more democratic, where you have people voting and you don't have so much management on your end. Um, you know, because it it can look like a huge task, you know, when you've got a client and you've got a service provider, what happens when there's a dispute, but you also are using the blockchain technology for that to make a a democratized kind of um, voting system, right? right? So uh, it looks, you know, it looks like you guys are going to have a lot on your hands because I can vouch for the fact that, you know, this is a huge problem. There is so much frustration with freelancers and clients around the world. There have been attempts at new systems, but this sounds like it's going to be something really revolutionary. And you have, um, starting with the soft cap of $2 million, right? Correct. And then um, going up to $22 million to reach your goal. So what is the, what is the long-term goal? So the long-term goal is to have a 5 or 10% market share in the next five years of the global freelance economy. Mm-hmm. Uh, we also hope to, uh, so other, part of our plan and our roadmap is to actually use our token as a form of payment to integrate with other existing gig economy or freelance economy platforms that don't want to go through the hassle of uh, launching an ICO, creating their own token. Mm-hmm. So other apps, you know, for example, yeah. that are in different countries, they can use that. And what that's going to solve, it's going to solve the problem that we're trying to solve for ourselves as well. 
And then one other thing that I forgot to mention is when you look at this Upwork and Freelance, collectively they made hundreds of billions of dollars, mm -hmm. but they only made those by connecting a handful of countries. There's 195 countries in this planet. Only a handful of them that actually transact in Upwork and Freelance. What about the other 185 left out there? Mm -hmm. So imagine when you open that global opportunity for all these individuals and think about when so how great things happen when four or five people think the like on building a business. Mm -hmm. Now think about millions of people are in line with the same business and trying to build that empire together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then we've seen it like we, in the past, between 2014 and 2017, uh, more 6% of the workforce converted to full time being a freelancer. Mm -hmm. And they did that on, by choice. A lot of them, they, just, they rather live knowing what's they not know how they're going to make tomorrow rather than live paycheck to paycheck mm -hmm. and the idea from this for millennials is even much more clear because they've witnessed what the corporations have done to their parents mm -hmm. some people have been working for the corporations for 50 20 30 40 years and mm -hmm. 2008 crash what happened to them they let them go like they put numbers above the people above the people i they love were, that about your culture is that you're putting the people above and it's not like i mean it's not like you're not going to have the numbers. You will have the numbers. You're targeting 5% of number. the the total freelance community, uh, which is, I don't know how many people that is or how many, uh, how, how you could, do you do you have any idea of? Of how many freelancers exist on the yeah, planet? Yeah, I mean, I guess it's changing all the time. So even just in America alone, 57.5 million Americans are freelancers. Wow, okay. you got a great market ahead of you. So... And in the U.S., is a 60% of the actual consumer base as well. Mm -hmm. Now, there's more. There's reason why we see there's a lot of these uh, what we like to call them like a farms, mm -hmm. uh, ser uh, uh, server farms. Yeah. So a lot of these workers don't have banking systems, so they'd rather work for someone that is willing to pay them cash or uh, and, and and build and and you know basically take that. They have no choice. Yeah. Otherwise, they have done the work themselves. Um, as far as like how the market is growing, I mean, I'm looking at the data and I'm happy to share this this, graph, this report, this data that we put together that freelancers versus workforce, we, but in 2017, there's more freelancers actually than the workforce, than the full-time employees. Wow. How the and workplace has changed. changed. Yeah. We have, we're looking at 108 million versus 102 <laughs> million. And then automation, machine learning is taking away jobs. And funny, one thing is people they know is in 20 years from now, their job might not exist. So they better start adopt to doing something. People are starting quick. to realize they need to be flexible. Now, um, you have such a, a huge market that you're targeting um, in the freelance world globally. So not just in America or Chicago or wherever. But um, so your soft cap is two million. And what, what are you planning to do with this ICO? As you can see on our website, we've already allocated 35% to the market um, uh, marketing, some toward development. And some that will go toward more of a research and development as well as expand it in a different jurisdictions and territories and build partnership. Mm -hmm. We know this isn't going to happen by just us doing the work. We're actually looking for people that want to partner up with us and help us expand this, this network and this horizon across everybody. Because at the end of the day, we're not building a company that it's, it's a profit, just focused on profit, but it's a company that's focused on making the actual people around it, everybody that is involved, uh, uh, some form of compensation in the ecosystem. But our intentions from, from uh, myself as well as the rest of my team, we, we put people before the numbers. And then the thing is this, like when you create something of a value that the users can use, the numbers comes after following like on its own. It's just, it's yeah. no break. Yeah. You want to get that experience, uh -huh. that value. And hopefully, like, like I said, the end goal is we can drop the poverty level a percentage or two at some point. That's a success. For us. Exactly. We've opened we've opened the gates, we've allowed lots of freelancers, and now is the time to create some form of stability um, yes. where everybody can benefit. And I absolutely love this idea of your ecosystem that you're developing. Um, I think there's going to be a lot of interest in it. Um, and yeah, I think it's quite cool what you've done with your other company, Chore Relief, in in just a matter of 12 months, having built it up to 12,000 users in uh, your area, I believe. Would you like to talk a little bit about how that gave you some insight for, for the next project? So, by the totally, the funny thing is just that when we actually first had our orientation with our service providers, because we like to bring them in and just kind of like put that idea in their head. I want, I want you to think of this as an entrepreneur business, not just a, a factory worker. The first comment they all said is like, 
I've worked for Thumbtack, I work for this, I work for this. I've never met anyone face to face. And here I am sitting with the CEO and then the, and the, the VP. I'm like, yeah, we're not, we're not a corporate guys. We, we want to make sure that if I can get you to convert your mindset and start to think of the possibilities, what you can do, like in any business in general, there's two people. There's the one that has the factory mindset. I mean, you can do nothing about it. If that's what he wants, you just want to get paid and go home and, and sleep. And there's the one that is driven, the hungry entrepreneurs that wants to build something. And then what we build it with Toroli is we say, look, it's catered for either way. If you want to be just making a quick buck on your downtime, fine, you can use our app. But if you want to make a business and hire people and recruit more members and expand your services, we have the user dashboard just for that. Mm -hmm. So. And that itself was actually gave us that look, that extra experience that we want to take with us and put it in this blockchain mm -hmm. space. So we've seen apps like um, Uber transform uh, transportation. We've seen Airbnb transform accommodation. And I believe that labor crypto will um, transform the freelance community, right? Yeah, I mean, that's how we'd like to be known, like the workforce. When it, because it, there it is no leading freelance free community no. at this point. No, because everybody, like the way how these freelance platforms is no different than factory workers. Mm -hmm. They're making everybody like to be independently, do what you get at all, do what you have to do, and that's it. We don't want that. We want the freelancers and the consumers to collaborate and talk with each other. Why can't we just allow these people to use what exists in successful industries? Like, like I said, you know, the medicine doctors, they refer to each other, but lawyers. Why can't these freelancers do that? Why do we have to bring to let them live in the idea of hate and competition where we can actually create collaboration in between them and that actually allows them to even thrive and go even higher mm -hmm. in terms of income and rewards. Using blockchain technology for collaboration um, and a key word I see here is care. It's not just a technology, you actually care about people, which is amazing. And you have a massive market um, ahead of you that you're looking at um, and I think you're going to do very well. So thank you very much for talking with me today. Um, it's been a pleasure. We're talking to Tariq Kripesh from uh, Chicago, living in Chicago now. Great to have you on our show. This is Meet the Makers. My name's Rebecca Hope from Block News. We'll see you next time.